So what is the Chernoff bound and when is it useful? Well, let's look at a Gaussian PDF, for example, and it's often the case that we're interested in the probability that a, an outcome from the random variable is a big number. So we're, we're interested in this, for example, in digital communications. If we have Gaussian noise, we're interested in the probability of getting a big value of noise, let's say bigger than a certain value A. And of course, that is the area under the PDF. So this is the probability density function. And if you're interested in the area under the PDF uh, up for a bigger values than a certain value A, then you may be interested in the Chernoff bound. And for more int information on PDFs, uh, check out the links uh, in the description below this video where there's uh, other videos that explain random variables and PDFs uh, and other related functions. So let's be more precise about this Chernoff bound. We're interested in the probability that the outcome of the random variable is bigger than or equal to a certain value A. And the Chernoff bound tells us that that probability, which is the area under this curve here, that probability is less than or equal to e to the minus at times the moment generating function. And again, for information on the moment generating function, uh, check out the links in the, in the description below. Uh, and this is for any, uh, for any t uh, bigger than zero. So for any value of t uh, bigger than zero. So let's try to understand what this means. Let's, uh, let's do it uh, with an example. Uh, it's useful to us because uh, instead of having to actually calculate that area, which is often difficult, in the case of Gaussian, uh, we can't ever calculate it exactly. We have lookup tables to, uh, to do it, and even uh, computer programs uh, have uh, approximations for it. Uh, but here we've got a bound on it so that if we can calculate this bound exactly, then we'll get an exact uh, value for what the biggest it could possibly be, and that's where it's going to be useful. Uh, so let's look at the case, the example of the Gaussian. Uh, so in this case, uh, we've got um, the uh, moment generating function uh, equals, um, well, let me just draw it out here for, for Gaussian. Uh, let's put it directly into here. So for Gaussian, that means this probability is less than or equal to e to the minus at uh, times the moment generating function for a Gaussian, which is e to the mu t, where it's a mean of mu, uh, plus sigma squared or a half, uh, sigma squared on 2 times t squared. So this is the moment generating function for a Gaussian. And again, there's other uh, videos on, uh, on this moment generating function. Okay, so this is what we have for the Chernoff bound for a Gaussian. It gives us an an equation for the biggest value that this tail could possibly be, which will be uh, interesting to us. And how do we uh, look at this and understand this a bit more? Well, it's uh, probably a good idea to think of uh, the specific Gaussian where it's the mean is zero and the variance equals one. So let's look at this as often called the normal Gaussian uh, function. Okay, so in this case, uh, what do these expressions here, uh, what do they come down to? Well, this is e to the minus at, uh, and then if the mean is zero, then this term is not there, and this term here, the sigma squared is one, so we've got t squared divided by two. So this is plus t squared divided by two. So let's look at this example to try to understand a bit more about the Chernoff bound. Okay, so in this case, we've got this choice. It says it happens for any t. So let's see what would be a good choice of t to give us a bound that we might be interested in. And I think what you can see is this is an exponential function. So if we can get a value in the uh, in the power of this exponential function, if we can get the smallest value that we can possibly get, or in fact the most negative value, better way to say it, then we will have the smallest value on the right hand side and that will therefore it will be our tightest bound. It will be the smallest value we can have which will be the tightest bound for this probability. So let's look at this function here which is in the index of the exponential. Uh, it's a squared t. So let's plot this function. I'm just going to plot this function over here. Um, so it has uh, it goes through zero, so it has a function of t, and we're just plotting the, this up here in the, uh, in the power of the exponential, uh, and so we're going to plot that. So the, 
when you can have a factor of t here, so it goes through zero at, uh, at zero, and it also goes through zero at a value of, uh, I think you can see this here if you uh, take out the uh, one of these t's, uh, and then you'll have 2t, uh, take out a t, and then you'll have 2t minus a. So this is 2a and zero. And this is a, a parabola, of course, and the parabola, uh, you can take the derivative of this and you can find out where the turning point of the parabola is, and the turning point is at a. And the value here at a, so if you take t equal to a, then you get uh, at the value t equal to a here, you get minus a squared divided by 2. And so this is the most negative value that you can have for this term, which is in the power of the exponential. And so therefore, the tightest bound you can get for a Gaussian is when you choose t equal to a, because as I say, this Chernoff bound held for any value of t that's positive. Uh, so then you've got uh, the bound here is e to the minus a squared divided by 2. And so this is for the value of a that you're interested in. This gives you an upper bound on the probability that you're going to get an outcome from your random variable that's bigger than that value of a. And so you don't have to calculate that exact area. And as I say, in, in some cases, it's difficult to calculate that area uh, with uh, the integral because of the form of the PDF. But if you have this Chernoff bound and you have the moment generating function, then you can calculate a bound on that tail probability. And that's what we've done here with an example in the case of the unit normal Gaussian. So if this has helped you uh, with uh, understanding the Chernoff bound, uh, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Um, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And as, I, uh, as I've said, check out the information in the description below the video where you'll find a web page which has a full categorized list of all the videos on the channel.